Hello everyone, I'm Travel Kai and welcome to the EDH channel. Today's video is sponsored by Mythic Patron Neil Smothers. If you'd like to support the channel as well, then you can visit Patreon and donate with the link in the description below. Failing that, a like, comment and subscribe is always appreciated. Now, let's have a look at everyone's opening hands. A Wayfarer's Bauble from the Celestia player, followed by an animation module from Bootleg Greedo. And we get into a Grill Signet, so I don't know which of these two that we want to get down on. Turn two, probably just go for the Grill Signet and concentrate on ramping with Kodama's Reach, so yeah, let's get down the Cinder Glade and pass. The artifacts continuing to come down over here. Implement of Improvement. Sacrifice it to gain a couple of life when it's put into the graveyard from the battlefield draw. And the same is true of here, except put a plus counter on something. Then Greedo, just playing a land and passing. And we get into Ilharg the Raised Boar, so we've got something to ramp into now. Let's go for the Grill Signet. Wayward Servant from Kills. And making use of that straight away by throwing down a Crypt Breaker. The Wayfarer's Bauble getting cracked by Mattis Men, and then playing a Bounce Land in Celestia Sanctuary. Then the first commander of the game comes down, Jilanra, Caller of Wirewood. Which takes us around to our turn, and getting to Crater Hoof, alright. Uh, so I think it's Kodama's Reach for us. And we'll play out the forest that we just tutored for, so that we're not letting our opponents know if we've got lands in hand or not. Then it's Undead Warchief getting down some really good zombies here. Replaying the land that they bounced previously. Then getting into a commander of their own in Ichtekic. And that comes down with a Golem token. Mazaret, Crawl Death Priest, Flying, and it's a 2-2 whenever a player sacks another permanent. Plus one counter on each creature you control. Alright, so do we just get down Ilharg and hope that we can keep it in play without having to sacrifice it? We'll have to dodge Sacrifice from here and here as well. I think we go for that. Yeah, I think we go for Ilharg here. And then next turn we can go for one of these, get down our hands, and hopefully put something good on top to cheat in with the Ilharg. Although, this needs to be from our hand, doesn't it? Yeah, so maybe not. Tapping down the zombies to draw a card, which is why he didn't swing in before. And then going in for Shepherd of Rot. Each opponent loses a life for each zombie on the battlefield. Swinging in with just the one zombie, a 4-3 goes in towards Greedo. Keleth's Sun Main Familiar for Matty's Men. Then a Celestia Locket. And sacrificing the Implement of Ferocity to put a plus counter on the Ichtekic. Which means Mazarek will put a plus counter on everything. And animation module triggers, they don't have the mana for that. It will also trigger the commander, so because an artifact went into the graveyard, a plus counter goes on the golem as well. And they sit at five cards in hand, each tech it goes in towards Greedo. And the golem goes in towards the Golgari player as well, so everyone fearful of Mazarek. Yeah, another commander coming into play, and they will draw a card with the ability from Jalanra. So Nadia, Agent of the Dusk Nail, coming into play. Mazarek now a 3-3 with Flying. And are we going to draw into a card that we can cheat in with Ilharg? Uh, yeah, well I don't mind cheating in a Salvala. So how's about a Cream of the Crop here first? 
And then we'll swing in towards... Greedo's getting a lot of hate here, and probably rightly so. Um, yeah, why don't we go in at Greedo as well and offer up the trade? Ilharg will trigger. Oh, actually, you don't get to keep the card with this, do you? Return it to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. Yeah, we could go for Kratuf here. I'd rather just not show my opponents that we've got Kratuf, so... Yeah, on second thoughts, we're not going to do that with Ilharg here. Deciding to take a hit, as I assumed he would. So let's throw down the Selvala to get Summoning Sickness off of that. Maybe should have gone for Season of Growth first. But we'll trigger Cream of the Crop. Alright, Heroic Intervention and Arcane Signet. I don't think I want either of those. So we'll just put the Arcane Signet on top. Let's go Season of Growth. And we'll pass the turn at that. Hopefully, get to start drawing some cards with Salvala. Oh wow, Billy Kills drawing into all the good zombies here. Getting down a Death Baron. Plus one, plus one, and Death Touch to his zombies. And the Wayward Servant swung in towards Matty's men. And deciding to sacrifice the Implement of Improvement to gain a couple of life. And they'll get some plus counters distributed over here as well as on their Golem. Micah Synth Lattice coming down for the Golem player, which is always worrying. Now Corpse Jack Menace to get even more plus counters on things for the Golgari player. Now we know what we're drawing into, it's an Arcane Signet. Let's drop a land and we'll see if we can put something interesting on top with Hans. So putting Cream of the Crop on the stack so that it resolves first. Because we don't necessarily want what's on top. Uh, well okay, Port Razor, I don't mind. So we'll scry that on top with the Season of Growth. And we could cheat Crate Hoof into play, but it doesn't really do anything for us. We won't draw with Salvala with that. Might as well just get down the Signet here. And we'll pass like that. It's going to be difficult to get through with creatures in this game. Then Kills goes for discarding a counter spell to make a zombie. Making that with the Crypt Breaker. And then I assume he'll... Yeah, he's already tapped down the Shepherd of Rock. Can tap down the zombies... I think it's three, isn't it? Yeah, in order to draw a card. Not sure if they actually did that or not. Uh, no, decided not to draw another card with the Crit Breaker. And here he is, Nevermral, Urborg Tyrant. And I don't think... No, they don't have a sack outlet in play at the moment, thankfully. It will be tied for the highest power, so they won't draw a card with Salvala. And just deciding to hold back. We've all got nukes pointed at each other at the moment. Now another creature coming into play for the Celestine player, Howling Golem, a 2-3 when it attacks or blocks, each player draws a card. And then into Aurum Reef Ooze, when it enters put a plus counter on a creature you control, and when it attacks put a plus counter on each attacking creature with a plus counter already on it. So putting that onto the Golem they just played. Then again just deciding to pass through the attacks and we'll go through to Greedo's turn who is doing something. They are going for choose a counter on a permanent or player, and they get another one of that kind, so another plus counter going on Nadia. Oh, Avenger of Zendikar, I'm not sure if they've made a land yet. But Avenger of Zendikar will get them into six plants. Luckily, haven't seen a sack outlet from them yet, but that is when this deck starts going off. And yeah, they did play a land there, so a bunch of plus counters going on the plants. And then Animation Module, I think they paid for one of those. Yeah, they did, because they got a Servo Token. Now a 4-4 going in towards Billy Kills. Now it's round to our turn, we get down that Port Razor, so I think that's what we cheat in here. Although, eh, yeah, probably not actually, we can't get it through to anyone. So maybe we just hard cast Port Razor. And then we can look at the top cards with Hans Eriksson. So we'll throw that down into play. Uh, we're not going to draw with Salvala. Now, Season of Growth will allow us to look for an additional card if we bottom one. So I think I'm going to go for Season of Growth resolving first this time. Okay, Rishkar's expertise. Mm. Is the board going to get wiped? We really need Rishkar's expertise here, so I'll just have to keep my fingers crossed. We might be able to cheat in a card with Hans Ericsson, even if the board does get wiped. It 
It's just going to take us a few turns to do that. Yeah, I'll have to keep that on top. And we'll get rid of some other things. Uh, yeah, could have cheated out on Atali. It's like I say though, we can't swing in with anything. So let's put the Rishkar's Expertise on top. And all those can go on the bottom in any order. Then I think we just have to continue to hold back. We could get the Rishkar's Expertise into our hands with Hans Ericsson. Do we just do that this turn? We're going to have to throw Hans Ericsson away, I think. Really don't want to do it, but I also don't want to just use next turn drawing cards. And we might not be able to draw cards if someone wipes the board, so... Let's just swing in with this. In towards Matty Smen. Get the Rishkar's expertise into our hand. And they've got a chance to kill off our commander here. They might be worried about some kind of combat trick. Alright, just going like that. So we'll each draw a card there, so that's good. And we'll also get to keep our commander. Okay, Fabled Passage. So this turn is actually going alright for us. So let's tap down the Salvala. And we'll make a bunch of green mana. Play Rishkar's Expertise and hope that it goes through. And it does. And we get into Valakut Awakening. Uh... Sylvan Library, we can just hard cast, so let's cheat out the Valakut Awakening. Yeah, we'll probably just do everything apart from the Sylvan Library here. So we go, yeah, we'll go up to seven here, won't we? After we've played the Sylvan Library. Alright, and then do we want to shuffle things around? We've got Vivian. Yeah, we're looking a lot better now. Uh, let's play the Sylvan Library. And we'll shuffle things around with the Misty Rainforest. But we'll do that during Bootleg Greedo's turn. Pretend to hold up something here. The Crypt Breaker going for a card draw this time. And then going for another card draw, going up to seven, and they haven't done the Shepherd of Rot yet. But going for it this time, we plummet down to 21, we each take seven. And Greedo is down to three already. So Billy Kills can get rid of Greedo whenever he wants, basically. He's also got the Wayward Servant to worry about. Rooftop Storm, play Zombies for free, six cards in hand. So if he can play three of them for free, then that is Greedo done. And there's one, Lord of the Accursed. Can give Zombies Menace for two and a tap. This deck is brought to us by Neil Smothers, by the way, a Mythic patron of the channel. Big thank you to Neil for supporting us at the Mythic tier on Patreon. That allows him to submit a deck once a month. And the 6-5 Zombie coming in towards us. Yeah, I don't like it, but I think we have to take that. Tallbred Guardian is 3 to adapt 2. Each creature you control with a plus counter on it has Trample. Then a Refurbish, return an artifact from Graveyard to the Battlefield. They are going for Implement of Ferocity, the one that gives a plus counter and draws a card when it's sacrificed. So Greedo being down to 2 life, I mean... Yeah, it's pretty much just do whatever you feel as though you can do at this point. He plays a land, gets two plus counters on each of his plants, thanks to the Corpse Jack Menace. Doesn't make any servos with the animation module. Explosive Veggies will put two lands into play, so that is uh, four counters on all of his plants. So the plants jump up to eight nines. Now it might be because of the predicament that Kills has Greedo in, he'll just choose to swing at one of us. I personally would go in at kills and force him to use the Shepherd of Rot. But I don't know what Greedo's going to do here. They've gone for a Cultivate to get two more counters on all the plants. So now they are all 10-11s. Holding up a mana still, so didn't make a servo. <laughs> yeah, he's just doing exactly what I would do and forcing Billy Kills to go for the, um, go for the nuke button with Shepherd of Rot. And he does. So we go down to 6, Mattisman down to 9. Been a weird game, we've all been in creature based decks and none of us have been able to really swing in at each other. 
And then it's Sylvan Library. We can look at some cards here. We've been really missing haste in this deck. I can't say I had too thorough a look through the deck. But haste does seem to be missing here. We'll put Ash Barons on top. And do we want to cheat down a Godo? Search for an equipment. Put it onto the battlefield. We could make Hans indestructible, but we could swing that into the Celestia player though. Let's just put Godo on top and we'll cheat that in. And I think it might have to be Zendikar Resurgent, although Kills just wins next turn, doesn't he? Okay, so Decimate gets rid of an artifact, creature, enchantment and land. So that would have to be... Uh, we could target a creature as an artifact. Yeah, the thing is when this dies, so we can't get rid of that. We probably get rid of the Shepherd of Rot and the Wayward Servant. Get rid of that as the enchantment and get rid of command tower. I'm just wondering if we need to go for the mana doubler first. Yeah, I think we're done anyway. So let's just go for decimate onto, we need to choose an artifact. So we'll go after shepherd of rot, choose a creature, the wayward zombie, rooftop and command tower. I oh, forgot to get in the land with the misty rainforest as well. So floating one mana, and it is a white mana, so they might have swords or something. Then tapping down a couple of the creatures in order to draw a card before they end up losing them. So they've tapped down the Death Baron. Uh, they've tapped down Crit Breaker, tapped down the Zombie as well. Oh, I think that swung in last turn, didn't it? And some artifacts go into the bin, so Itch Techic will get a bunch of plus counters on himself and golems. Uh, Alright, so let's go Selvala. Maybe should have got down this mana doubler before now. But we'll go for it here. Actually, we could go... This is return a card. I thought it might be permanent, so that's return card. So we could go decimate again. Problem is we can't decimate their Nevenral. Why don't we see if they block with Nevenral first? Yeah, it'd be good to blow up Nevenral, uh, Undead War Chief, maybe the Death Baron. They won't have the mana to put into Nevenral, so they might not block with that. Why don't we see about swinging in here? I think I've already played my land for the turn, actually, haven't I, with Morog? Unfortunately, we can make landfall with the Misty Rainforest still, though. Uh, so why don't we just turn everything in sideways at kills? Because he's got us on the ropes anyway. Ilharg the Raised Boar can cheat down the Morog. We know what Hans is going for. Hans gets down a bunch of stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we might as well put Godo on the stack so that it resolves first. Uh, so let's go Salvala. Don't think we're going to draw into anything with her, but we'll put that on after we've scryed and everything. We'll put the scry on top of Cream of the Crop. And Godo will allow us to tutor for something here. So we'll say yes to that. And I think we make it Hammer of Nazan as opposed to Dark Steel Plate. Because Hammer of Nazan has more upside. So what do we want to make indestructible here? That can just get chump blocked. That won't trigger on its second ability because it hasn't... It hasn't attacked, it's just come in attacking. Uh, so we can lose the Hans, maybe. Don't know if I care too much about losing the Ilharg, so let's put the hammer on our commander. Then it's a Scry. Primeval Protector is 11. It costs one less to cast for each creature your opponent's control. When it enters, put a plus counter on it for each other creature you control. Uh, I mean, yeah, it'd be good to cheat that in with Hans, but we're just going to draw into it next turn. I don't think we care about drawing into that. Yeah, I don't think we do. So we'll look at some fresh cards on top with Cream of the Crop. Uh, and again, it's haste that we want, really. World Spine Worm doesn't gain life, does it? No, it just leaves us with some worm tokens. Hellkite Tyrant is funny with the uh, Microsynth Lattice, so we'll put that on top. We'll end up stealing all of our opponent's permanents, including their lands, if we manage to land with that. But again, missing haste, I don't think we will. So the Godo goes down to fight in the Hans Ericsson, and we'll cheat Morog into play. 
that can go in attacking Billy Kills as well. So a creature enters, it's Hellkite Tyrant on top. We'll put it back on top, see if there's anything better with Cream of the Crop. Okay, Terastodon. Uh, yeah, I think it has to be Hellkite Tyrant still. Now then, let's see how Kills wants to block. We're not winning this one either way, because Kills has us on the ropes, like I said, and Matty Smen can probably just get us on the swing back anyway. But we got to see what we want to do with this Hans Ericsson list, at least. Just took us a little while to get going. So that blocks the Hans Ericsson. And the Commander blocking the Port Razor. So a bunch of plus counters go around here again. We knock Billy Kills down to two. And it's probably Matty Smen gets rid of both of us, so we'll give Billy Kills the chance to wipe the board, I think. Yeah, we'll just hold on to the Balagad recovery. We do have double mana. Yeah, I just want to encourage Kills to go for the board wipe. We could decimate some stuff here, but... Yeah, I don't think it's ours to win. Didn't want to shuffle away the um, dragon on top, just in case we get another turn. Didn't want to shuffle it away here for an extra combat step. Because we're not getting through to Matty Smen anyway. So Marog goes back to our hand. Kills has six cards in hand and a means of drawing cards still. Although he can only do it once because he loses a life to that. So if he does have a board wipe, Kills is probably just going to get rid of us first. And he does. Then the other things going in towards Matty Smen. So yeah, this does smell a bit like a board wipe to me. Although it's curious that he's not offering up this to be blown up. So hold him back. The Lord of the Accursed, probably because he's going to give menace to things. Uh, so if it's one, two, three, four creatures going in at Matty Smen, he can block one, two, and three of them. Okay, make that two of them, thanks to a D-Spark going on to the Trollbred Guardian. And blocking with the Howling Golem, we know what we're drawing into, because we've got that dragon on top. So it is... The Undead Warchief being blocked by these two. And then the Death Baron, so both the Lords being blocked. Which means six is going through. And five is going through, so that is both of us done here. Don't have enough instant speed interaction, unfortunately. So there we go, both of us going down. We could have taken out Billy Kills there with another combat step, but... I wasn't really interested in dictating who wins the game. I was just more interested in keeping ourselves in the game if we could, which we couldn't in that instance. We either take out kills and then Matty Smen swings in at us, or we don't take out kills and kills does this, so not really much of anything that we could have done there, but a fun game nonetheless. I think we got to show off hands quite nicely there. It'd be fun to run this one again, but it is really up to Neil Smothers as to which deck he wants me to run next month. So a big thank you to Neil for giving me the deck to play with, that was a fun one, I was looking forward to playing this one. Hopefully you all enjoyed it as well, leave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you did. I'm Travel Kai on the EDH channel, thank you for watching.